Now let's look at calligraphy. This is the art of beautiful writing. Now, if you look at all of the examples except the one in the middle, this is all from the golden age of Islam. You see how beautiful it is? Right? This is mostly from the Alhambra, the Spanish Muslim castle. We're going to see a lot of pictures of that. On every wall and gate almost, there is calligraphy written. And it's all praising Allah. So some of it says, لا غالب إلا الله. There is no victor except Allah. And in the middle, you see the blue and gold U.S. commemorative stamp. What is it commemorating? Eid. <coughs> and it's a calligraphic stamp. Eid Mubarak. Now this is, can you believe this is calligraphy? Yeah. On the right, this is modern day calligraphy. A man, yes exactly. It's in Arabic though. So it is, it is Haji Nur who was the Chinese Muslim. It has elements of Chinese and Muslim calligraphy. So the man, it looks like a man, shh, I need you all to listen. There is a man on his knees and it says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of God, the most merciful, the most gracious. And everybody, if you're talking, you can't learn and listen at the same time. So listen. Now, what it also says after Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is La ilaha illallah wa Muhammadur Rasulullah, and all of that takes the shape of a man. And on the left, we see a surah from the Quran, Surah Maryam. And it's done in calligraphy. And calligraphy has been best preserved for Muslims in writings of the Quran. These are different types of calligraphy. It would be fantastic for us to learn this in the future. There are two main types, cursive and kufic. And there are subtypes underneath. Now, in the middle, what do we have? No talking, please. Allah. Now, what do we know as the first commandments? Does everybody know that Muslims have the Ten Commandments just like Jews and Christians? We need to know this, right? Because we live in America. And actually, most of them are almost exactly the same. What's the difference? When Muslims have the first commandment... Yes, Tom. What, uh, what was the question? Okay, I will tell you. When Muslims talk about the first commandment and it has to do with do not make, do not take any other gods or partners besides Allah, right? We see that Jews and Christians also have do not make graven images or worship anything else, right? Do not make idols. But we see actually that they have. Have you seen pictures or statues of Jesus? Things like that, right? We see that some people have. So whereas some people haven't implemented it, and that's the commonality we have, that we all share those Ten Commandments, but we see that Muslims have used calligraphy to think about Allah because they haven't broken that commandment, right? So we use calligraphy, beautiful expressions, to think about Allah. We use the prayer to communicate with Allah, right? We're talking to Allah. When we want Allah to talk to us, what do we do? We pick up. Quran, right? Allah's words are in the Quran. He is talking to us, right? So this is how a Muslim differs. Now let's look at the Alhambra. Who thinks this is beautiful? This is magnificent and we're going to see more and more of it. Boys, don't you think this is magnificent? The girls think it is. Now this is just one area that has interlaced lines. Look at the interlaced lines for me. Do you see this? And how delicate it looks so fragile as if it would fall. And it's been here since the 1200s. So, no, it's not. No, it's not made out of gold or it would have been looted because there have been so many thieves of places like that. When the Muslims were um, pushed out of Spain, a lot of looting happened. Now, but look at this, look at the, from the Nasrid dynasty from the 1200s to the 1400s, this was built and completed. And again, many of this is calligraphy. It's made by companies. Uh, hey, they're not uh, supposed to make any, uh, the Islamic law is not supposed to make any, um, any roofs with, uh, with gold and silver because there were a story yeah, of that with a Nasr. Mashallah, Mashallah. Yeah, that uh, he he did that. He did like a roof, and it's all like gold and silver. It was like so fascinating. And then one of the judges, his name is uh, Hisham. Uh, he asked him, "What do you think about that?" He started like giving him an ayah from the Quran. He told him that you're doing like a, the kuffar, and he said, "You call me kafir? How dare you?" 
And he gave him an ayah in the Quran where it says that they do bunyan means like the, the, uh, the buildings and they have roofs of uh, fudda, means silver. And he told him, you know, that's why. And so he started <coughs> crying. And now so he's one of the kings in, uh, or, or Khalifa's Khalif. He was the first Khalifa Umawi in the Qurtuba. And, he, and uh, he repented and he took it off and he put copper instead. So that's all from Al-Nasr, by the way, all those uh, copper. Another metal that is not a precious metal that can't be used as money. So, but it is in pennies, of course. But it's but gold and silver are so valuable that Muslims cannot, right? Allah has said, do not use them, for instance, in silverware or anything, a roof in your house, because that's not fair. It needs to be used. We can't hoard it up and be greedy with it, right? And use it for something that's not intended. It's supposed to be used back and forth as money. Now let's look at the Alhambra. This is a panoramic view of it. It's in the city called Granada in Spain. This whole site has become a national preservation. That means the whole country of Spain preserves it and keeps it up. And we'll talk about why, because it was neglected for a while. Look at these fountains. This is what the Muslims originally did. They're working again now. Look at the beautiful gardens. All of this, the Muslims, through Spain, created a ripple effect and everyone in Europe was copying it. There were no gardens in all of Europe before the Muslims. There were no great Gothic cathedrals or any architecture that was huge and had spiring arches before the Muslims. Is that snow? Is that snow? And I didn't see up in the mountains. Okay, they are, they are located on the Sierra Nevada mountains in Spain and it does get very cold there. The whole area is very mountainous. Let me ask you to look for differences and similarities. The Alhambra, again in Spain, and Taj Mahal, two different types of Muslim architecture. Who sees similarities? Who sees similarities? There's a lot of similarities. Look, look at the water. Water, will do and hygiene, taking care of ourselves with water. This wasn't known in the Middle Ages, right? The Dark Ages, if you read about them, were a period of ignorance, right? People weren't learning, and a period of the plague. They had plagues, they had disease because people weren't very clean, right? So we know that Islam came with the, with the teachings of the Prophet, what? That cleanliness is... Part of Exactly, beautiful. It's part of faith. It's even half of faith. So cleanliness is next to godliness. That came through the Protestant Reformation that happened in Europe. And that's from Islam's impact on the West. Right? So this is something they learned from, from Muslims. And they, so because of that, Muslims love to create fountains. I'm hearing talking, please. And they love to create gardens with water. So you see, e even in these two very far apart pieces of architecture, some similarities, gardens, green, but this is very different, right? But you see a grand soaring, nothing ever was built high and soaring to the heavens before the Muslims. Europeans took that into the Gothic style of architecture afterwards, okay? Now, so we can see from the 